Welcome. Today we're going to talk about Safari extensions for iPadOS 15 because there's a lot of cool ones. A lot of cool ways to make the internet less dumb than it already is because there's a lot of dumb ads and stuff like that. Before we dive into that, a few ways you can support the channel. Number one, you can become a member below. Uh, you can see the join button for YouTube, so join me there. You can do super thanks if you like that. Uh, or you can take one of my courses on Skillshare, curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare. There's actually links to all the individual courses below if you want to take those. Let's buckle up and look at Safari extensions for iPadOS 15. So one of the first things you're going to need to do uh, to even get really extensions to deal with them is go into your settings here and then go down to Safari and go down to extensions. And then you actually see I have a bunch of extensions installed. Um, and then you have to turn on whichever the first one you have installed is. Now, realistically, the um, best way to find extensions is also to click more extensions here. There's not really a good way to find that on the store, unfortunately. If you look here, you see a lot of them. So we have a few actually since yesterday, even though it updated. So Bring for adding recipes. That's interesting. The Firefox browser, Noir, we'll talk about. One blocker, we'll talk about a similar one. Uh, language translator is good. So there are a lot of extensions here, but a lot of them are focused on roadblock, right? Blocking stuff. These are content blockers a lot. That's a content blocker. Um, yeah, and I, so 1Password is also one that I was going to talk about, but the problem is I'm not, I'm still unclear about what I get out of 1Password, the Safari extension that I don't get out of 1Password, just standard using an iPad OS, making it a password extension uh, in the bottom. So I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, but there's a lot of content blockers. The top free, right? Grammarly we'll talk about. Honey is a shopping assistant. So there's a bunch in here, but the best way to find it is really from your settings. Now let's dive in and start talking about them. I've got Safari open here. Let's just open Google for now. There you go. You see I have eight extensions enabled. I have one password active tab. Grammarly for Safari, Noir, Overamp, Stop the Madness, and that's where we'll start with Stop the Madness. So Stop the Madness allows you to change a whole bunch of stuff on the web that you really don't want to do, right? It enables um, autocomplete, bypasses the AMP links. So an AMP link is a custom Google thing that they forced on web users a number of years ago saying it's going to be so much better, and it really wasn't any better for web users. Uh, it all wasn't better for websites, and I'm not convinced it was better for web users either. This stops all the AMP links, so you don't see them. It's supposed to be a faster way to load sites for mobile, and a whole bunch of mobile sites had to spend tons of money doing it, and it didn't really do much. So bypass link shorteners is another one. Skip the bit.ly links, go straight to the end link. Um, add some contextual menus, cut, copy, and paste, drag and drop. So some sites will actually stop cut, copy, and paste for you. And this doesn't let them do that. Um, it, was, it just kind of cleans up the web for you so you don't see a whole lot of extra stuff that you just don't, you don't want. Next up, Unsmartifier. There's really not a lot to this one. You just install it. And what this one is going to do is for sites like YouTube Studio, where you see a banner at the top saying, hey, use our app. You have our app installed. It's going to take that up away because you don't want it. Like it just takes up more space on my iPad screen when I'm literally choosing to use my iPad. And it's annoying. I don't want that on there. Next up is Super Agent. Super Agent is a great app. It's so when the EU said, "Hey, you got to start letting people know about cookies," and everyone had to throw up cookie banners, it just got annoying uh, because most people just click through them and has no idea what it actually means. You have to have a cookie to log into anything. That's just how the web works, um, and this just accepts all the cookie notices for you, so you don't have to see them again. I don't know how it does it, but it just cleans up the web excellently because it sucks to just click no to or yes, accept to all these things. It just accepts them all and, and bypasses. You have to have cookies for these things. It's just, it's how the web works, people. Next up, Noir. So I use Noir to force everything to dark themes, especially when I'm using my iPad with an external monitor. I find that it just doesn't display light themes well. But I prefer dark themes, especially the new M1 iPad Pro has so bright that it's just, it's far better to use it in dark mode. So I do. This allows you a bunch of features so I can enable by auto, um, I can change uh, the default appearance. I'm going to use the theme dark black or gray. If I'm going to dim images, and I also choose built in dark mode. If I'm going to ignore uh, the site dark mode, I can enable keyboard shortcuts. Or if I'm going to use the site dark mode, there's some like the one for, I think it's Stop the Madness. Right there, user pass app. So this site right here, I actually don't love their default dark mode. So I come in here to Noir. 
right? I'm going to ignore their dark mode. I can just default it to off. It feels too dark to me. I, and it makes it harder to read. I actually have a hard time reading it um, in, the, in the default dark mode for the Stop the Madness site. But there is just a touch lighter I actually prefer. So you can set that on a site by site basis. Uh, and I like that. There's actually another one out there called Dark Reader, which has a few more options, uh, especially there's one that's kind of like a highlighted 80s theme, which I have used in Obsidian and I like. So I kind of like that, but Noir has the right amount of features without having me fiddle with like 42 themes, which Dark Reader does have a lot more themes. So if you want more options than what Noir has as far as themes go, then Dark Reader is the one you want to look at. So next up is Pipifier. You see I'm watching a video from Patrick Rambles here and... <sighs> In theory, I should be able to put this into picture in picture mode and I can on the YouTube app, but I actually find I sometimes want to play in the background and I sometimes want a picture in picture. And so I have to toggle that as an app setting all the time, which I don't really want. So this Pipifier, uh, I just come in and click Pipifier and now I have picture in picture. With YouTube controls, perfect. I, I just, I don't, that's it. Now I can do whatever else I want. I can go back to my home screen. I can still see Patrick Ramble's talking about the M1 iPad uh, and what he likes about it, doing a full review of it. Another interesting one if you're doing video, especially if you're doing a lot of video that is not um, on YouTube, is Vidimote. So Vidimote is going to give you, you can see the controls here for skipping forward, for choosing, scrubbing your timeline, for choosing your speed, for putting it picture in picture. So there's just, it has more controls here for other videos that aren't on YouTube. Now, I don't really watch videos that aren't on YouTube, uh, at least in Safari. So yeah, I'm not going to use that one. That's another one if you're watching a lot of videos from other sources that's going to give you more control over what you see and how you deal with it. Next up is X Search. So X Search is cool because it lets me do stuff like this. CA, just typing CA, and you can see it actually already has. It's deciding I probably want to look at uh, Amazon. So let's do 13 mini case. And now it's searching Amazon for 13 mini cases. That simple. So X Search lets you do a bunch of stuff and set up searches. You can see I actually heard it in split view because I used that earlier to set up my custom amazon.ca search engine, CA. And I actually did that by finding the amazon.com one and looking at the query string here and basically I just changed .com, no, .com here to .ca over here. So I can search Amazon by just typing A uh, in Safari and it'll take me to amazon.com. I can search amazon.ca by typing CA and there's a few others in here, right? DuckDuckGo by typing D and then space, Google by typing G, Stack Overflow for with SO, Wikipedia and YouTube. YouTube is YTAP. So that is really nice and it lets me do stuff that I had done previously in Alfred on my Mac and lets me do it right here on uh, my iPad. And I use that a ton when I'm like reading books and I want to take note of another book a book mentions. I use that with Obsidian, and then I'll hop into Safari and type CA and search the book on Amazon.Canada so that I can really find it and put a link to it quickly. It also has a big gallery um, of other options. You can see just built in already. If I want to search Apple or Ask or Bing Translator, right? all these other th ones that you want to look at are just built in already. GitHub, if you want that, and you just hit that and then activate and it's activated, right? GitHub shows up here now, GitHub shows up here now. That's it, and it clearly supports split screen. So if you're making your own custom one, uh, like I did with Amazon.ca, I could just look at the Amazon.com one and add it. Next is active tabs. Let's go to my site, hersmikhail.ca. Just taking a while to load. I should talk to the developer of that active tab. This blue bar is active tab. So without active tab, it's actually hard to tell, uh, at least in current Safari, I understand that's going to change in the next version of Safari uh, based on 15.1 uh, release candidate. Um, but this blue bar just helps you tell what tab is active. Right, it's much easier to look up and see which tab is active. That's all it does. It's simple. It's excellent. Another thing to look at here is Web Inspector. And you actually see here if I click Web Inspector, it's going to ask for permissions here. So you have to do this for all your extensions. Always allow and allow on every website. So now I can come in here and click Web Inspector, and it gives me the HTML of my site. So I can actually look through it if I wanted. I could edit it if I wanted with the Edit button. If I wanted to do that, cancel. I could actually take things out if I wanted as well. So this is interesting from a developer point of view to see. I like, say, see the styles down here. I could change them. Can I change them? Font family. Doesn't look like I can change the styles, unfortunately. But it gives me some view of this. The only other useful uh, tool like this. I, how do we quit Web Inspector? I touch. I don't even know how to quit it. So it's OK, but if you want to see the web view or the HTML, that can work for you. And I'm going to turn it back off because it's just getting in the way. 
And I'm probably not going to use it because actually the inspect browser is a better web inspector for um, for your iPad. It's not as good as Chrome developer tools, but it is better than the web inspector for Safari. Again, for a quick check on HTML, you got it right there. You can just refresh your page and it will go away. So the final few, Good Links. Good Links is a read it later service, uh, totally on your iPad or your iOS devices, your Mac, does not sync out to the web. It syncs kind of in your devices in the iCloud ecosystem. Uh, like Pocket or Instapaper. And so it has a uh, Safari extension as well that just makes it faster to um, save your links to GoodLink. The final one I want to show you is Mapper. So what we're looking at is where I have to go later today with my daughters. Uh, and I'm going to go uh, click the directions. And usually this is a Google Maps view, so it would open up in Google Maps, but I don't want that. I want it in Apple Maps because I just like Apple Maps. And it did it for me. That's what Mapper does. That's all it does is it just forces Google Maps links out to Apple Maps. Uh, I actually had to fight this last Friday when I took my daughter out for her birthday to get the address for the climbing gin into Apple Maps because it integrates with our car system really well. And I had to like fight and fight and fight to get it into Apple Maps eventually by like figuring out a way to copy and paste the address. And it was actually one block over from where I really needed, but it was close enough I could figure it out. So Mapper is excellent. Just it works well. It pushes your links directly into um Apple Maps instead of having them stuck in Google Maps because that's not what you want. That's it. If you like the video, thumbs up below. If you love it, subscribe, hit the bell, and then take a look at Safari extensions because there's a bunch of cool stuff, and I expect more and more will be coming out, and hopefully we get more on a Mac OS as well. Uh, you can support the channel by becoming a YouTube member below, taking one of my courses. You can find them at chrismichael.ca slash Skillshare, and have an excellent day.